Hey buddies and winchies and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a care guide and I've been putting off making this video basically ever since I started this YouTube channel purely because the particular fish that we're going to have a look at in my case is very different compared to others of its species. We're going to have a look at none other than the Jack Dempsey cichlid and I'm going to take you through everything that you really need to know about its care, the aquarium environment that it needs, compatibility and all of those kinds of things so you're fully set up to go ahead and care for an amazing South American cichlid. Now before we get into the this video though as always let's acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and the people that are managing our land as well. Jack Dempsey cichlids in my opinion are quite easily one of the most underrated fish in the aquarium hobby. They're incredibly easy to find, they have amazing colours, they're really hardy to keep and they also are relatively cheap because of how easy they are to find. Along with that I think they're a great entry level South American cichlid for those that are wanting to get a bit of a taste of the, uh, you know, the bigger growing cichlid world or for those that already have a South American cichlid tank and you're just wanting to go ahead and add some life. I've had my female Jack Dempsey over the past six years and she is easily one of the most important if not the most important fish that I've kept over the past 12 years because it was when I got her that I really started to get growth in my aquarium keeping journey and I also have this YouTube channel to the level it is now because of Jill, my female Jack Dempsey. So let's actually have a look at all the things that you need to know in terms of caring for this phenomenal species. Now let's start off by having a look at the coloration and the growth rate of a Jack Dempsey. When you have a look at most other South American cichlids that are in that larger aggressive category, they all tend to have the same color palette. Take an Oscar or a Jaguar cichlid or a Dovi for example, they all seem to have those, uh, those greys, those blacks, browns, maybe a hint of red, but they never really have any vibrancy to them. And that's where the Jack Dempsey is on another level. They really have these metallic, vibrant scales that go from the head to the tail. They range in colors like green, purples, and blues. And under aquarium lighting, especially in the males when they reach maturity, it is on another level. Don't get me wrong, the females still also have amazing coloration. And when you have a look at Jill, she really does have those blue scales all throughout the face and also hints of purples, little bits of uh, cream colors and black striping that grow through her body as well. And the other really unique thing about a Jack Dempsey is their stocky and girthy body shape. They really do carry a lot of weight to them. And they actually get their name from a 1980s heavyweight boxing champion, Jack Dempsey. And that goes to show just how boisterous these fish are and how aggressive these fish can be. But in terms of their growth rate, the females will reach about 25 centimeters, and that's where Jill has maxed out. She's at her max potential size, and I doubt she's gonna get very much bigger than this. The males, on the other hand, will get a little bit bigger. They'll reach about 28, even potentially 30 centimeters long, so they can reach up to about a foot in length. Now, the other really important factor about a Jack Dempsey's care is that they do live for a pretty hefty amount of time. They've got a 10 to 15 year lifespan and a lot of the times that can be quite overwhelming, especially for the fact that they do get pretty big and they do require a larger aquarium. If you don't necessarily have a suitable plan to keep a long-term tank, this may not be the best fish for you. Now, I call Jill my Jack Dempsey sort of like my firstborn child because of how long I've had her and it really does become a member of your family. A lot of my family is really attracted and interested in how Jill's progress is doing and she's always a star favorite on this channel as well. Let's now have a look at the aquarium size and needs for a Jack Dempsey. Now since this fish can reach about a foot long, though it's a little bit under, let's say a foot for convenience sake, they really do need a large aquarium. I'd recommend a four foot by two foot by two foot tall tank, which works out to be 120 gallons as the long-term home for this fish. You could keep a Jack Dempsey in this aquarium size from its birth all the way till death, and I think that it's a great minimum size to go ahead and consider. The reason you need a tank, in my opinion, as big as this, even though some online sources may say smaller, is just because of how territorial a Jack Dempsey cichlid can be. They really do need their space, and because they're a big fish that does have teeth, if they don't have the space they require, they can really do some damage to other tank mates. But the four foot, 120 gallon aquarium allows you to have room, a little bit of wiggle room for other tank mates as well, which is a really good thing. 
And their size in the aquarium setting also really does dictate the filtration that you require. I would recommend to go ahead and use a canister filter or a sump. You could potentially use some large scale sponge filters, but I just think that the efficiency and effectiveness of a canister filter or a sump would be a lot more convenient. Now, I've had my Jack Dempsey in a five foot aquarium and a six foot aquarium in the past. And uh, the six foot aquarium used to be filtered through a canister filter. My five foot tank uses an inbuilt sump. Both of these are an efficient method of filtering for a Jack Dempsey cichlid because they can be quite messy. Much like other South American cichlids, when these fish feed, they can you know let little bits of food through their gills, through their mouth. And because of their girthy body, they do have a relatively high bio load. So the efficient and high capacity filtration, in my opinion, is basically a must with these fish. In terms of the aquascape, it is also quite important because of their territorial behavior. I'd recommend that you go ahead and add in a bunch of visual breaks and sort of things that can establish a territory or a section in the aquarium. And that really minimizes the amount of space that your Jack Dempsey will be willing to readily occupy. I'd recommend that you add things like large tall pieces of driftwood, caves, little bits of rock here and there in the tank that can really make the Jack Dempsey create its little environment that it's happy to go ahead and remain in, whilst the other space can be potentially used by other tank mates. Along with that, these are a tropical fish. They do require warmer water temperatures. And in my opinion, it's probably better to go ahead and keep them on the warmer end at around about 26 degrees compared to anything cooler. I find that their colors are just a lot better in the warmer temperature, along with their behavior, which is just a lot more active. And any other water parameters, which may be important in my opinion is just pH. These are a South American cichlid, so keep them in lower pH scales, anywhere from six to seven, even 7.5 five should be fine, but anything in between that, which is fairly easy to maintain, should be A-OK -okay for your Jack Dempsey. Let's now go ahead and have a look at feeding your Jack Dempsey. And this is where you have a lot of fun keeping this fish because they can be really interactive, especially when they go ahead and associate your presence with them getting fed. They will really just go ahead and come up to the top of the aquarium, wait like a little puppy for their food. And especially when you get them finger trained or hand trained, it's an absolutely heart attack inducing experience, but it's incredibly fun. Now, Jack Dempsey cichlids, being a messy South American cichlid species, do require fairly high quality food with a lot of protein content to satisfy their carnivorous needs. The reason I really do stress a high quality pellet food is because especially when these fish eat, they make a lot of mess. Lower quality foods tend to have lower quality ingredients and these can quickly foul your aquarium water and coupled with the larger bio load of a Jack Dempsey, it can really overrun your filtration. So I give my Jack Dempsey a mix of Vitalis and Extreme Aquatic Foods pellets and uh, this is a mix of their South American and their community range with both satisfies my Jack Dempsey and the other fish that I have in my my aquarium. Now you can go ahead and supplement your Jack Dempsey's diet with some additional frozen foods. Frozen bloodworms, live blackworms or frozen brine shrimp will all be great examples of foods that you can add into their diet just to give them a bit of variation. Now when it comes to the actual uh, dispersion of the food, whether it's better to feed them floating or sinking, I personally like sinking foods just because the Jack Dempsey spends most of its time near the bottom or mid portions of the aquarium. Whenever I do feed Jill floating foods, she will take to them. However, unless I'm hand feeding her directly, there's a lot of hesitancy when it comes to her actually feeding. She'll have to wait, see that it's actually food, check out her environment, then actually go and take the food. And especially if you're keeping your Jack Dempsey with other large boisterous tank mates like an Oscar, for example, it could potentially lead the Oscar get out competing the Jack Dempsey dietary wise. So feeding them a sinking food probably is just gonna be a bit more convenient. And especially in my cream, all of my fish do prefer the sinking food. So I just go for sinking. And now we get into compatibility. And that's where this care guy just goes absolutely downhill. My Jack Dempsey Jill is incredibly broken when it comes to the behavior that she is meant to display as the Jack Dempsey. I've mentioned about five or six times in this care guide already that these are an aggressive fish. Their large body, their teeth can really cause some damage to a tank mate if they don't have the adequate territorial space that these fish need. In a small aquarium, I have personally seen the damage that a Jack Dempsey can do in other people's aquariums firsthand, where they can shred tank mates that are potentially bigger than them. There's also videos online of Jack Dempsey's having a fight with fish like a Saratoga or a Flowerhorn. So that really goes to show just how temperamental these fish can be. 
I'd only recommend to go ahead and keep them with fish that have a similar personality and size. Keeping them with a fish like an Oscar would be a great example. Some potentially larger catfish species like a Raphael catfish, a common pleco, anything that won't really mess with the Jack Dempsey would be a really good option. I have also seen people keep them with species like Severans and also Geophagus, but I'd probably err on the side of caution with these more semi-aggressive to peaceful fish just because of the territorial behavior that a Jack Dempsey can display. In my aquarium setting, however, this all goes completely out the window because Jill is mentally broken, as I mentioned, when it comes to being a Jack Dempsey. I actually keep her with a bunch of smaller aquarium community fish. This is fish like a Tetras, Rasporas, Corridoras, Baby Brussinos, Plecos. I've even had her with Guppy Fry before, and that just goes to show you how every fish can really be different. But 98%, 99% of the time, a Jack Dempsey is gonna be aggressive, and Jill, so far in the past 12 years of me keeping fish, is the first time that I've ever seen or heard of even a Jack Dempsey being kept with small nano aquarium fish. And a lot of people don't believe it when they hear it for the first time. And um, yeah, it's probably gonna be a bit of a thing that I won't recommend to go ahead and try out. This was just pure luck that it worked out. And honestly, if it works for you, then that is great. Good to be a part of the team. But a lot of the times it won't. And I recommend to just go ahead and keep them with some more larger, boisterous South American fish that will really go ahead and be able to hold their own against the temperament of a Jack Dempsey cichlid. Now that we've seen all the basics on how to care for a Jack Dempsey, how and where do you go about buying one? Now these fish are globally available. They're really easy to come by and they should probably have the same level of availability as a Oscar cichlid or a Jaguar cichlid, for example. If you go ahead and ask your aquarium store to go ahead and source a few Jack Dempseys, that's something that they should very easily be able to do. If not, jump online or have a look at any uh, online marketplace like Gumtree or Craigslist and they should definitely have a Jack Dempsey. The males tend to have a bit more of a streamlined or uh, pointed dorsal fin, whereas females are a bit more rounded, and the females have a lot more blue near their cheek plates, whereas males, the blues all throughout the body. So if you are looking for a display male, keep an eye out for those traits, and you should be able to snag an absolutely amazing fish. Alrighty, bodgies and wingies, I really hope you enjoyed that care guide. I'm glad that I was finally able to make it, and I really do hope it's given you a bit of awareness on an absolutely amazing aquarium fish you can keep, being the Jack Dempsey Cichlid. I think it's a fish that I will always have in my possession no matter how old I am just because of the connection that I've developed with Jill and I really hope you can enjoy that as well. But if you want to see more care guides like this make sure you let me know in the comment section down below and feel free to consider subscribing to this channel to keep up with any future videos or to keep up with Jill's progress as well. But that's essentially it from me so as always stay happy, stay safe, stay Aussie Australian, Bodgy and Jill out. Thank you.